Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM and part two of looking at the abandoned railway here at Smeagol in the heart of Poland. Last time we headed out the platform and went south down the bit of the railway still operational and found some of the track bed and the rails that have been left in situ and took a trip down memory lane to the last time that me and James were here way back in 2010 when we took this thing out for a run which must have been one of the last trips before the railway that had been running under the Association of Local Railway Transport in Poland, the SKPL, closed due to a disagreement with the local authorities. Today, a preservation society has been set up and operates the part of the line that we saw in the last video, where today we're going to be taking a look at the line going northwards. Immediately as we leave the station, we can see signs that part of this line isn't heavily used anymore, with the track being hidden under a layer of dirt. But this section of line has actually seen trains in recent years, at least for a few kilometers up the line, depending on who you talk to, depends how far it officially will run to. And this bit doesn't look too bad as it makes its way this way and through Smeagol. As soon as it leaves Smeagol, it joins up next door to the main road. Just imagine small trains working their way through the town over all of these little level crossings. I particularly like the way the railway just cuts through the end of people's gardens as it makes its way through the town. Now, this section is not overgrown and is technically in use, although currently there are no scheduled trains to come this way. Yeah, and you can see quite clearly on the crossing just behind me that nothing has come through here for a very long time because the roadway is just covered it all up. What's also impressive is the sheer gradient by that level crossing. Again, you can't see anything because visibility is terrible, so as a locomotive driver you just have to hope that the cars have stopped and take a run up at it. Bear in mind that they had PXs, the little 080 steam engines, pulling the transport wagons, so they're the ones that take the standard gauge wagons through here. So everything's got to be wide enough for standard gauge and you'd be hurtling along to try and pull a big train up that. Yeah. So it goes round here and then it starts leaving the town. So that's where we're going now. Taking to the air again, just around the corner from where we've been standing, the railway now makes its way away from Smeagol's town centre and begins to hug the fields as it becomes more rural. This section is part of the line that is still technically in use and as such is in fairly good condition. As we come to the outskirts of Smeagol and leave the restrictions of the town, the railway now runs alongside the road and you can see clearly nothing has run here for a very long time. Behind us there's a short platform and the rails are, well, still above the top of the grass. There is some care and attention being put that way. This way, but it looks like a flail mower comes along just chops everything down over the top, but yeah, this is all completely abandoned going all the way that way. I think it's a long way that it goes off that way. It's amazing to find a network like this that's still in situ, that's technically you could use, but it's just not being used. Nothing travels along here, but it's not been lifted or anything. It's just still here. So hop in the car and we'll follow it as far as we can. The best thing about this particular line is the fact that as the road network expanded, it basically just mirrored the railway. And that makes total sense because the land's already flat and the route has been chosen going through the major points of civilization, which means that chasing it for the most part is very easy. And there's a wagon there, so we're going to stop and take a closer look at that. A bit further up the line, we come across this wagon, which looks beautifully abandoned. Clearly, it has not moved in some time. The embankment next door to it has started to spill over onto the railway, and it is, well, very much in situ. It has, in fact, been repurposed. This is now a shelter for a bus stop, which is really tragic for a railway item to be used as part of the bus. But the railway that way is, well, abandoned and the railway there there is a stop on the rail a rail stop to stop this thing from moving and joining the main not that it's going to happen just seeing it sat here is really really sad and the railway then continues that way and gets far more abandoned now as we move away from the wagon what's now a bus stop up to that section you could argue that maybe this railway isn't abandoned it's just lightly used but from here onwards as it goes along here and through into there this is 100 percent unused and abandoned you can just see the rails through the grass and this side well nothing railway has come through here for a very very long time the railway now moves away from this road cuts through a field up there and then rejoins the next road 
So we'll pull the car around and we'll pick it up on the other side. Technically, what I just said was true. The railway does go away from the road and eventually rejoin it. But this is the longest section that the railway is away from the main road as it cuts through the field and then goes through a dense woodland. And it really is a dense, properly overgrown woodland. It's one of those that from the air, the woodland is so thick you can hardly make out the track bed at all. You can just about make out a faint line where it cuts its way through the trees, but it is genuinely very tricky to see. It eventually comes to the edge of the woodland, but stays within the trees themselves. We rejoin the railway here inside the woodland, and at this point, nobody can argue that this isn't an abandoned railway because look at it, we in fact, we knew where this was on Google Maps, but actually finding from the railway has taken us a good 10 minutes of walking around to actually just go, oh, it's right here. What's most impressive about this is the road that runs just the other side of the wood goes down a 6% grade. We started at the same height of the railway and we've done the same distance and the road was like that. This railway was ridiculously steep as it made its way along here. It's stupid, but yeah, this, is entirely abandoned. You can see there's a tree down just up there and then it continues that way along the fields through the forest a bit further until it rejoins the road again. This is crying out for preservation. This is just stunning. And to reiterate, the railway is still there. If you came along with a hefty chainsaw and you were brave enough, the railway technically is still passable, which is completely mad. I've never come across anything like this. As the railway pulls itself out of the woodland and into the open fields, it first passes a lake before going round a curve and heading back towards the road. This is the single longest section of the entire railway where the road and the railway diverge. For the majority of the rest of the journey, it's just next door to the road, which is where we pick it up now. The railway comes back round here and now rejoins the road following alongside. Once again, the verge has been cut so we can just about see the tops of the rail, although it is all filled in with muck. And that will take us all the way up to the next village. So we bundled back into the car and headed off to follow the track bed. The thing I like most about this is it is definitely a closed railway, but all the crossing signs are still in situ. As we passed here, there's a grounded van body, not a passing place, just a grounded van body. And then we hurtled through the town. I love the fact that the railway crosses all of these people's driveway and the railway is still in situ, so you could pass along it. We then came across another station with a passing loop, so stop for a look. So just outside the next village, there's a small passing place. There was presumably a platform here where trains could pass or dump or wagon, and still the remains of a completely seized point. Can't get that to move for love nor money. And the railway continues off on towards the next town in a that way direction, still hugging the side of the road. Before we departed, I had another bash at trying to get the point to throw, but there was just too much built up soil and other rubbish. And eventually, I gave up and we got back in the car. What begun now was one of the longest sections of single track running parallel to the road that we'd encountered. It just keeps on going. You can just make out the rails through the grass and all the grime, but they are still there. All the way until this point here, because the house here apparently has relayed their driveway and removed the rails. Just one section. The rails now come away from the road slightly in order to make the curve as we come up to this junction, but soon we were along them again until we came to this bit here, which is well worth a look because it was a bit more substantial than any other stop. This hub of activity is Vilkovo, and this in 2004 was the terminus of this line. As you can tell from the fact that there are indeed three separate rails here. So you could have a run round, goods being dropped off. Back in the day, this was quite a major stop. Today, however, well, not so much. And it's really sad to see this and to also to imagine that when this was still operating in 2004, that you'd arrive here at the terminus and be like, oh. Onwards from here, we hit our first real obstacle. There is a short section further there where the track's been removed and there's a few driveways that they've paved over. But here, a new junction has been put in and all of the rail has been removed. So if you were to try to come along here, you might be able to get here if you had a lightweight vehicle. But beyond that crossing, things get a bit more difficult. Annoyingly though, just the other side of it, the rail is still in situ. So we will pick up the trail as it continues going that way. But from this on, realistically, not navigatable. We could put a short section in over a driveway again, I'm sure. That bit, 
probably not going to happen. Before we got back into the car and continued on our adventure looking at this closed railway, we were approached by a couple of ladies who asked if we were anything to do with the railway and were we looking at bringing it back into operational life because they missed it and it was such a useful lifeline for them to get out of the village and visit other places including the larger town up the line. When we said no, we're sorry, we're English enthusiasts, they were very put out. And it shows just how important this line had been to the locals who really didn't miss it until it was gone. As we continued on the line and crossed over the section that was removed, we carry on alongside uninterrupted track. It's so frustrating that that one small section was removed because otherwise this line would be complete. Overgrown and abandoned and unused, but otherwise complete with one small section of new road going in, ruining that forevermore. Even all of these driveways that we pass still had the railway running outside. And I love that idea of having to check both ways before you leave your house to make sure there's not a train coming. And as we made our way through the town, we came across yet another station. So we stopped to have a quick closer look as the weather was turning less than pleasant. Here at Sniati, there's another station with a run round loop. However, at some point in the past, the run round loop has been disconnected from the main line, the loop being on a much lighter grade of rail than this fairly heavy duty stuff. Behind me, there's still the marker for the point and the rail comes away from the road here, mostly because the road goes around a very sharp 90 degree bend and the railway can't do it. So it's got to loop away from the road to then curve round and rejoin the road just up there, heading towards the next town. What particularly amused me is the redevelopment around this track formation. They've turned it into kind of a mini roundabout, and I love the idea of just having a railway going through the middle of a roundabout. Can you imagine that, having to give way not only to the traffic to your left, but then also the train as well? We weren't on the road long before we came across our first proper piece of railway infrastructure, which of course was this bridge. Now, I'm not saying that I wouldn't cross that, but he has definitely seen better days with a lot of the timber looking, well, quite frankly, life expired. I don't fancy taking a train over that. Moving away from the bridge that's past its prime, the road and the railway diverge. The railway skirts along the outskirts of a small woodland, whereas the road carves a path right through the center of it. With the railway entirely hidden, you wouldn't even know it was here unless you're actively looking for it. This mound covering the track this is the last time it goes away from the road and it's beautiful running alongside all of these silver birches. It would be such a lovely line. Still, all the way intact as it went over the bridge, all the way along here. I have no idea why they just cut this corner. Maybe they didn't want to chop the trees down. Maybe it was easier. I just have no idea because the road just literally does a slightly wider angle and this just goes straight to then rejoin the road later. It's very strange. The railway literally appears to be built along the boundary of this woodland, and perhaps the extra light has allowed the silver birch to get in amongst the firs here. Having got back into the car, we've rejoined the railway after the woodland, and it will now parallel alongside the road all the way until the actual end of the line. All of this is still in situ. One or two houses along here have paved over or at least covered over the rail, but it is all pretty much still there. And I love the fact there is no pedestrian path here because it is just railway. The more interesting thing was as we came up to this point here, we found there's actual work going on on the railway, and it appears that they are renewing the bridges. Now, whether or not this is going to be for a railway or they're turning it into a cycle path, but there's another one being done here and a bit further up the line, there was a third bridge being relayed. Could this be the early signs of preservation and the renewing of the bridges to allow trains to run? Only time will tell. Everyone that we spoke to knew nothing of the work that was going on here. So frankly, if you do know, let me know in the comments below. And soon we arrived at the end of the line. So finally, we have arrived here at Vieli Hovo. This is the terminus of the line, or at least it was from 1973. Now, the station today has been restored to be a museum. They hold various meets, particularly motorbike meets here, and have, a, I think, a cafe. But this is certainly preserved. There's even a little hand-powered resin, hand cart, that people can come and operate up and down this short section here. It gives you an idea just what a massive, great siding station terminus this was. There are three lines uncovered, but there's a fourth hidden in the grass over there. And there's nothing. We're on the outskirts of a town and there's nothing else here. So trains would just appear and finish. Originally, 
the railway went all the way across and further you can see where it just curves on across the road up there towards Rakengavitsa which is on the Volstin to Poznan main line so you could go from a main line station at one end to the other running through the heart of Poland linking the two main lines which was pretty incredible so it's amazing how much of this still exists what particularly excites us is further down the line some of the bridges are being renewed now we had no idea about this as far as we're aware this is all closed and there's no work happening on it at all so maybe that shows some hope for the future maybe even just for this section they're going to be able to run short trains down there we have no idea but it's exciting to see stuff happening but for now this remains a completely abandoned railway still almost entirely in situ which is incredible considering the whole railway has been closed for 19 years not including this section which is obviously much longer so truly abandoned railway still in situ of which i want to bring something back and have a go at anyway with that i'm going to drive that way and see what's left of the railway there but to our knowledge all of that got lifted that's not still in situ but if you have enjoyed this one how about leaving a comment what do you think about this what would you like to see run on this would you like to see it come back and of course like subscribe and all of that if you have enjoyed this one how about clicking over there for the last time i discovered an abandoned railway or down there for my return to that said abandoned railway thanks for watching guys of course we'll see you next time